Welcome to Torista. I'm VR exploring, super dimensional, time traveling, magical girl Pino Green. And I have a secret. I have never seen Maho Shoujo Madoka Magica. So today I'm going to talk about magical girls and pledge to change that. Let's go! What is a magical girl? Well, as a genre, it's very broad, so I think we need a somewhat broad um, definition. I would say it is some sort of genre where a girl has a real form usually developed into her through some kind of magic in which she goes on her um, battles to face this new magical world. Uh, of course, this is very much a metaphor for adolescence and puberty, more than likely. And movies that, or TV shows that fall into this are, of course, mm, Sailor Moon, uh, probably Cardcaptor Sakura, though I have never seen it, and I always thought it was like Yu-Gi-Oh. What else is possible? For some reason, I don't know a lot of them, despite my enthusiasm for it. Um, I confessed before, I haven't watched a lot of anime. Um, but at the same time, it feels like it's an older fashion genre to me. And the sort of the classic era might be the Sailor Moon era. Uh, that, that was a little bit before me. I um I saw some reruns of it, but I was never too much able to follow it. Yet uh, at the same time, um, there was also sort of like a an unspoken trend of like kind of isekai type um, alternate world stories, like the near fictional world going on in Western and American literature. I remember encountering at the same time things like Jack the Giant Slayer, I think it was, or Jackie the Giant Slayer was an old book. Um, there was, of course, the Changeling the Dreaming line of uh, games, which never really got popular. But a whole bunch of stories like that, where there's something marvelous going on just around the corner, just beyond our vision. And I think that sort of what it is to be juvenile, you have this sense that everything around you is kind of a setup and that you need to get behind it and see what's really there. And I think that is the essence of the magical girl. My expectations are mostly a blank slate. Um, I've been staying away from any kind of spoilers or things. Um, although I have sort of picked up the names of the characters from cultural osmosis. Uh, but also, um, the little confession, about two and a half years ago, I watched the first four episodes. So I have a very slight opinion. Um, at episode four, I had, well, if it turns out to be true, it will be an epiphany. But I don't want to put anything, even conjecturally, as a spoiler into this episode. So I think that the story is going to be very much about um, those, as I said, sorts of adolescent turmoils and feeling um, like the self is dissolving into the world around you and in great peril. I, I'm hoping that, I don't know, in the Western world, we're moving very strongly toward um, prophylytic identities. But I hear, and it's my impression, that in sort of the Japanese and Chinese type Asiatic sphere, um, it's still based more on authenticity or sincerity. So. I'm wondering if what I might watch is uh, the anxiety of switching to a new type of identity or having switched but not being recognized. I hope to see more. So my pledge to the Dorstites is every week 
I will watch one episode and do a review. It doesn't matter how boring the episode is, although I very much doubt it will be, or how dark it gets if it drives me toward total nihility. I will see it through to the end. So, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Like and subscribe if you please. Goodbye! Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give us a comment and subscribe our channel. See you in next video!